at lap 25 of the Tums Quick Pack 500 at Martinsville, Virginia. Jimmy Johnson has led all 25 laps thus far. Remember, there was no qualifying here. They started by points for the uh, record ninth time in 2008. Johnson the leader, but don't look now because that 24 car, his teammate Jeff Gordon, is reeling him in. Now, a few minutes ago, we showed you the double zero car. Mike Bliss had some damage in the back, and uh, he didn't do that on his own. He had a little bit of help. Yeah, we told you the racing's really tight here. And coming up out of turn two, you can see that he got a little help from the 22 of Dave Blaney. Looks like Dave was getting a little bit of help from behind, too, with the 66 of Scott Riggs. Yeah, kind it's of really tight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just things stack up, and all of a sudden, a guy in front of you checks up, and you're into him. Word is, by the way, that right. double. Trouble in turn one. The 28 car has gone around. Travis Quaffle. Bring out the first caution flag of the day here on lap 29. Hold up. Well, Jimmy Johnson had just got to the back of the field there to start lapping cars. He had just lapped Bill Elliott. That's when the intensity level goes up on the back of the field. When that leader's coming, they want to stay on the lead lap. See these guys racing down in. No one. Pablo Montoya gets into the 44 UPS Toyota of David Rudiman, who then gets into Travis Quaffle. So another one of those chain reaction deals. So Dodge and the Toyota in the four. <laughs> and Travis came out on the worst end of that deal. Yeah, Quaffle was actually running 23rd, moving get, his way up toward the top 20. Doesn't get a lot of damage. He does lose a lap, though. The leader, Jimmy Johnson, had come around him, put him down a lap. Back it down, back it down. Go through the bottom, go through the bottom. Inside. Go. Keep digging, keep digging. Dave getting pretty loose there. There's action everywhere. Yeah, and I think part of that came from him trying to make sure that that car didn't come off the wall, so he had it cut pretty hard late. You mentioned the 21 car had just been lapped, and he will get back. He'll get the free pass. Bill Elliott will get back on the lead lap. Have a few cars making pit stops here. I would have thought everybody was going to stay out, but uh, the 11 car, Denny Hamlin and Dale Jr. lead a lot of others coming in. Yeah, Eric Almarola there, the nine of Casey Kane. Ryan Newman is there, Bobby Labonte. This will be a good chance for these guys to get off sequence. If their car's not right, they can come in here and get four tires. Shannon? Dale Jr. says the car is really tight past that center. He's going to make an air pressure adjustment on that 88 car as those guys go around to the left side. It is four tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dave. Denny Hamlin is already off pit road, having gotten Sunoco fuel in that car, two right side tires, and a track bar adjustment for a car that was a little bit loose in the center, and especially on the throttle. We'll check on the strategy of why they came in this early, as we are under caution uh, for the first time of day coming out here on lap 29. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Set for the restart of Martinsville, Virginia, under caution for the first time today. The 88 car, by the way, Earnhardt Jr., too fast, entering pit road. He's had to restart now at the tail end of the longest line, which will put him back in 41st position, way behind. Here comes Gordon on the inside. Wow, that was a bold move for Jeff Gordon, diving underneath Jimmy Johnson, getting into one. I'm telling you, he's got an agenda today, and that's to get this car out front and lead as many laps as he can and let everybody know that he's the guy that, that uh, they're going to have to beat here today if they want to get that grandfather clock. I think he knows Jimmy Johnson's got a lot to lose there, so he was going to leave him that, <laughs> that car width he needed getting into turn one. That opens a door, though, for Jeff Burton right in the inside of Jimmy Johnson, if he can hang there. Jimmy Johnson charges the corner turn three to make sure he's clear and get back to the bottom. A lot of these teams are pretty excited about the fact that the qualifying was ringed out and they were going to start by points, but the 2014 was not one of them. They were adamant that with this brand new car, they would have won the pole. And now they're up in the lead, so it's not a big deal as far as the racetrack's concerned, but they got the eighth best pit stall on pit road. That's where it might actually hurt this 2014. If we were able to qualify, they would have been a, a whole lot better position for a pit road spot. We just joined our coverage. One caution flag, lap 28, Travis Quapple, uh, chain reaction crash, bounced it off the wall. Minimal to no damage in the 28 car. The top 18 car stayed on the racetrack. Everyone else came on to pit road for tires and fuel. Here's the 10 car of A.J. Allmendinger. He had a great practice session yesterday, both of them, actually. This car was real fast. We saw a little brake fire after one of the practices, so uh, he's probably using a lot of brakes, but his car's fast. It's 
He's got Denny Hamlin right on his bumper, and Denny Hamlin was one that came in and, and took on tires in that most recent caution. And we heard Earnhardt Jr. talk about that his car was too tight, or were they reporting that his car was too tight? Yesterday, we heard him say during practice session that he was way too loose, so apparently a little bit of an over-adjustment for those guys. A.J. Allmendinger is the last car that did not take tires, so uh, that would be the first car that these guys with tires will get to. Oh, a little contact. Get into the left rear right there. That's Junior right there. I'm sorry, Junior. Yeah. He had to start dead last on that restart. He's trying to get up through there. He's going to have to do a lot of that if he's going to get up through there, too, and keep himself on the lead lap. But, well, I tell you, guys, this is a point in the race right now where these guys are really using these cars up, and the leaders, they got a little free ground up there. You see the air between the cars, so they're not bumper to bumper, but those guys in the back of the pack now, Man, they are so tight to each other. They're burning the brakes up. You see smoke pouring out of the cars. This is a point where it's where you got to let it breathe a little bit. Don't tear your equipment up early. So you got it at the end, like Andy talked about earlier in the show. That's one thing I'm concerned about. These guys in the back, they're, they're tearing their stuff up right now. That's what I was going to say, Rusty. It's a lot easier to take care of your car if you're in the top five or six or actually top ten. If you're back there in the back, you've got to use a lot of car. Yeah, you're up there like Jeff Gordon is right now. He can, you know, he can control the race. He can get out of the gas early, Andy, and kind of save those brakes. But the guys in the back, they're worried about getting laps, so they're driving their brains out, and they're actually tearing the car up early, not when you want to. You want to save it early. They just don't have that option right now. Hey, Rusty, uh, you did a lot more leading out front here, though, than you were at the back. So when you were that leader and catching these guys at the back, did you use some patience there, or did you just want to get them all a lap down as much as you could? Well, I tried to get them down a lap down as much as I could, uh, Dale. That's a good question. But also, you had to set the guys up. You had to know who you're dealing with. If you had a character that you knew was pretty rough and going to rough you up trying to get around him, you might give him more room than the others. But, man, right now, you got to be careful when these guys are getting lapped. But look how hard they're driving, guys. I mean, they're bumper to bumper. They're hitting each other, sliding around. I mean, they're really concerned about going down a lap right now. And, Rusty, one of the keys to your success here when you were driving that number two car over the years was you didn't drive the car that hard. You said you backed out a lot of times and didn't charge the corner. Well, right now, at this point, what I'd be doing if I was Martin Truex or Kurt Busch or some of the guys like that, if I got enough room behind me, guys, I'm going to get out of the throttle early at the start finish line way early. Let that car coast in the corner like that right there. Stay off the brake. Save the equipment. But when they catch me and they start roughing me up, that's when I'm going to start driving back off. What do you think's wrong with this 31 car right here? He's really slipped back. He's lost quite a few spots. Looked like he was good that first run. He ran Jimmy Johnson, basically kind of ran him down, and now he can't seem to keep up. You know, we saw yesterday he wasn't that good on the speed chart and uh, didn't well, pay that much. He got a little contact there with Greg Biffle and the double zero Mike Bliss. But uh, it looked like Jeff Burton was struggling in practice yesterday, which is surprising because they've always been so good here. Jeff Burton ran the most laps of anybody, any of the chasers in the final practice session. He ran over 80 laps. No one else ran nearly that many. Obviously, he's having problems here today. Jeff Gordon is our leader. You're watching ESPN on ABC.